Welcome to Seltzer Squad, the podcast about staying sober in the city with your hosts, Kate Sander and Jess Valentine. Hey everyone, Natalie here, editor and producer of Seltzer Squad. Today's episode is sponsored by Audible. Are you like me and you can't be left alone with your own thoughts for more than five seconds at a time? I know I can't. If so, you should check out Audible. Audible is the home of millions of audiobooks and exclusive podcasts you will never run out of content to listen to. If you're a fan of the show, you want to check out other sober content, books, and podcasts, or just want to read a book but want to keep your hands free while you clean, while you drive, while you're trying to fall asleep at night. If so, you would love Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash seltzer squad and you get your first month free. That's audibletrial.com slash seltzer squad to get your first month free. Hey, everyone. If you're a fan of the show and want to support us and get more content for yourself, go to patreon.com slash seltzer squad to find even more content. There are two tiers. If you're Princess FOMO for $2.99 a month, you can get early access to episodes on Wednesdays instead of Fridays. And for $4.99 a month, if you're a former hot mess, you can get that plus video episodes of every episode that comes out. In addition, we even put bonus surprise content for both tiers, go to patreon.com slash seltzer squad, help support us and get extra surprise content for yourself. Hi, Jessica. Well, hello, Kate. What are we doing today? I think, I think it's time. I think we've I got think our mojo time. back for hot mess. Yeah. We weren't we feeling haven't, it like, for a while. It. Yeah, we, we were like being like turds. We were mm-hmm. like not in good head spaces, not ready to like hear Seasonal funny depression, stories. COVID. All of the above. So I think we have a lot of hot mess stories right now. So do you want to start like at yeah, the bottom? Should I start at the bottom with Jay? Do, 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 do. Yeah, go for it. Jay writes, I was 20 not, 21 at the time, prime drinking age, home for Thanksgiving break, and went to visit a college in PA that some of my friends from high school attended. A super sexy guy from the grade below me came to pregame with us, and he started flirting with me hard. The night started off great, but I had too much to drink, no shocker there, and the rest of the night is completely blank. I woke up in his bed the next morning and immediately felt the moisture underneath me. Oh no. Unfortunately, this (laughs) was something I had done more often than I would like to admit, so I knew right away that I was laying in pee. Luckily, he was still dead asleep, so I stealthily got up, put my clothes on, and went to make a quick exit. But I stopped dead in my tracks when I saw what was laying on the floor right before his bedroom door. My oh, no. u- my used tampon from the night before. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be poop. <laughs> <laughs> I had forgot- forgotten that I was on my period, and I must have pulled it out right in front of him so we could hook up. I started. I heard him start to stir, so I scooped it up and scurried out of the bedroom as fast as I could. That was the work- worst walk of shame I've ever experienced. Almost a mile back to my friend's house in 30-degree weather, wearing a mini skirt, heels, with my used tampon in my jacket pocket. Oh my it God. was so bad, I actually jogged parts of it. At some point, I threw the tampon in a storm drain. Sorry, Mother Earth. My only saving grace is that the guy never mentioned the night to me or anyone else that I know of. And I later found out that he was also known for peeing the bed. So, hey, maybe it wasn't me that peed the bed after all. I definitely can't blame the tampon on him, though. Needless to say, we never hooked up to get we never hook up hooked up again. I'm extremely grateful that I no longer have to deal with nights. I don't remember and all the shame and guilt that accompanies them. I have a couple of things to say about all that. (laughs) No. So number one, I feel like I would have just, instead of putting the used tampon in my pocket, would have flushed it down the toilet. Oh no, she was trying to get the fuck out. I can relate. Okay, fine. But then like if she walked a mile, did she not pass a garbage? (laughs) I don't know. She's in Pennsylvania. Also, why wouldn't you get an Uber, girly? Yeah, I don't, that part I don't know. Why would you walk out in the... Your heels and your mini skirt, that sounds 30 awful. Degrees. Yeah, no. Maybe it was like a long time ago, but um we need to uh, I will say this, like she shouldn't, in my opinion, she shouldn't be embarrassed about the tampon because we need to fucking normalize like oh, periods. 
<laughs> it no, just reminded me of when I tore out my periods. IUD when I was hammered thinking that it was Oh a my tampon. god. I know. But <laughs> like seriously though, we need to start normalizing fucking periods. So Definitely, definitely. Um and maybe they had a normal down. conversation about it. But I also think that like all of us had the fear of toxic shock syndrome. I thought the story was going yeah. toxic shock. Like I didn't <clears throat> Oh, it didn't dawn okay. on me that they were going to hook up and she had her period because yeah. I feel like growing up, they beat all of that into our head so much that I know. remember how many nights you were drunk. Like, I think that's why I ended up ripping out my IUD in the first place is because I was avoiding toxic shock syndrome, syndrome like mm-hmm. eight extra hours or six extra hours with my tampon was going to murder me. Like, I've never known anyone that's gotten it. Like, is it a real thing? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it is, but who knows? I've also left like, like a tampon in there for a while. Have you ever had two come out? Like, what the fuck? Um, no, I know what you're talking about, but I don't think that's ever. I don't think that's ever happened to you. I've definitely left them in like way too long, yes. like falling asleep drunk or what, or just you know with yeah. it in and whatever. But uh, anyway, anyway, that was a good story. Thank you, Jay. For I'm gonna read it. a. All right. This is A's first drunk experience. It was the summer between eighth grade and freshman year. I was 13 going on 25. I had tried a few things with my friends like wine coolers and black and milds, but nothing serious. One night, my friend's older brother slowly creeped down our country road and parked. I climbed out of my window and met them down beyond our tree line. We all showed up at a house near my friends that apparently had been left to a 16-year-old for the weekend. I was so excited to be there. Growing up was all I wanted. We were drinking beers mostly until the older boys took us into a room with two big jugs of Everclear. Oof. I had three older brothers and felt an incredible mood. I'm sorry. I had three older brothers and felt an incredible need to prove myself, so I proceeded to take several shots. I felt like the queen of liquor. The party started to die down, and I asked my ride when I'd be able to get home. They said they couldn't take me. I was freaking out. I lived at least five miles, if not more, away from this house, and most of it is in the country. After 30 minutes of begging someone to take me home, I just left. I walked all the way home, dodging lights of cars, scared someone would take me home, and my parents would find out. When I finally slipped into my bed back home, a good several hours later, I cried. I have another 16 years of hot mess stories, but now I've been sober for two and a half years. That's not really a hot mess story. What? She could have gotten abducted. I'm glad that she remembered she made it home after taking several shots of Everclear. That shit's illegal here. Oh, I don't know what Everclear is. Everclear is like a 90 proof, like straight liquor that like you are only, it's like drinking battery acid. It's fucking disgusting. And us country folk drink it to keep warm in the winter. Mm. Oh, Um, I mean, that's definitely like, I shouldn't say it's not a hot mess story. I guess it's not a funny story as much as it is <laughs> yeah. alarming. I thought like, that it scary. was going to go like a, a weird way with these older dudes. And I'm glad that it didn't. That's I'm glad that she like drank the Everclear and then left like a smart, smart girl. Yeah. Five miles is really long. Yes. That is really long in the five dark. Five blocks is and really long to me. <laughs> ain't no street lights on a dirt road. So I bet that oh. was scary as fuck also. Oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that just, yeah, I guess I think of hot mess stories as being funny while this is just kind of more terrifying. Yeah, this is a terrifying <laughs> hot mess story. I'm glad you made it yeah. out at A. Yeah, me too. And she was so little. I know. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like, I'm glad she didn't get like fucking human trafficked. I know. Oh, it's so scary to think about. All right. I'm going to read S. My story comes from seven years ago. I had been dating my now husband for about a month and we flew to Mexico to work in an orphanage with his parents over the new year. This trip was part of a religious humanitarian effort, so there was no drinking. After being deprived for th- after being deprived of alcohol for three whole days, I was dying to get sloshed in San Diego before our return flight. We spent the whole day in San Diego and ended it at a bar for three hours where drinking began. Once drinking at the bar became too expensive, we decided to get some cheaper drinks at the gas station. It was our time. It was time for our flight, and I had I still had a few shots of whiskey and a full four, full four loco to drink. Being the classy lady that I am, I couldn't let any of the drinks go to waste. I chugged the four loco and the shots in the bathroom stall before going through security. This is terrifying. 
Once yes. through security, I could tell the four loco wasn't sitting quite right. My new boyfriend oh, no. suggested that I have some water. Fuck that. I'll be fine, I thought, and ordered an extra spicy Bloody Mary at the bar in front of our gate. <laughs> I had to chug it because our flight was boarding and, of course, no drink left oh, no. behind. That's like spicy on top of a four loco <laughs> and whiskey. Yeah. Uh, that's mixing a lot of things. Um, I've never actually had a four loco. Have you? Yeah, it's like a Red Bull with booze in it. I know what it is. I've just never had one because they were like made illegal before I ever got the chance to have one. Yeah, I went to um, a Four loco party at uh, what? the White Star Bar, the original White Star Bar or yeah. Hamilton Inn. I can't remember, but somebody was throwing a Four loco party. And why is that a thing? I went and got like just fucking destroyed and it was I remember it was winter and we were like hammered trying to walk back to that was when I looked oh all the guys on um in that house yeah that was the last time um okay as soon as I sat down on the crowded stuffy plane I started to sweat and my head started to spin I was in the middle seat with no way out and trying to hide it from my new boyfriend to avoid the I told you so look once the plane took off I knew I was fucked the motion of the takeoff sent me over the edge and I grabbed the tiny vomit bag that was oh, no. luckily stuffed in my seat. I threw up so much that I filled the whole bag and they brought me a huge black trash can to continue vomiting oh, in. It was coming out both ends. Oh no, in your seat. Oh no! <laughs> Did I mention no. I was wearing my boyfriend's shorts <laughs> and I couldn't get up to go to the bathroom until the seat belt, line, seat belt light went off? Oh yeah. I passed out on my food tray for the rest of the flight and woke up only to start vomiting again during the landing. While I was passed out, my boyfriend took the full anger of the flight attendants and other passengers asking why he would bring me on a flight when I was that sick. He told oh. everyone that I must have gotten a parasite in in Mexico to cover my ass. The passengers were complaining about how bad it smelled. Ugh. <laughs> I bet. The, I woke up the next oh. morning with the deepest shame ever. I thought he would dump me, but luckily he was so kind and understanding, and we are both now sober and married. Don't drink and fly, kids. Love a newly reformed hot mess. Oh my God. That is so a uncomfortable and like <laughs> oh everything about that. Like throwing up, shitting yourself. Shitting yourself on, throwing up on a plane, <laughs> shitting yourself on a plane, having to sit in, in said shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> this also, imagine if you been... were sitting next to this person. I would, as a sober person, I would be so fucking mad. Like, I would also be so mad. mad she chick. must have smelled so bad. <laughs> so bad. So this bad. poor thing. I remember shitting myself in first grade and kids didn't want to sit near me. Imagine being on a plane. Oh my God. Poor I also thing. fully believe that like with my history of anger and <laughs> arrest that I could have been one of those like crazy drunk women on a plane that mm -hmm. gets filmed nowadays that like loses oh, their yeah, fucking mind God. on an airplane when they're hammered. And I'm very happy that like six that years there's ago no, people weren't as far like, as you know, of, you weren't no getting canceled. Like yeah. <laughs> Because uh, I definitely remember there was one jet blue flight I took with a coworker, and we just got fucking like schmammered. Blitz. And yeah. I feel like we annoyed the flight attendants, and I blacked out for sure. And I'm sure that they mm -hmm. were just fucking happy to get rid of us. But mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how they deal with it. Me with either. Like that. Um, this is a. Um, I just want to pause, and this is a hot mess story, kind of. But not of, uh, it's actually, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I heard that our old manager mm -hmm. got wasted and jerked off on your couch. Mm. Is that true? I was not there, but, uh, oh my God. some, somebody was there. Yes. And S yes, was there. I, yes. Ah, oh, that's so disgusting. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't our couch. There was like a couch in our room when we moved in mm -hmm. and they would, party and like play poker and do coke and drink all night and i guess that definitely happened he was such a fucking creep though still is yeah. i'm sure oh yeah he's disgusting yeah okay i'm gonna read he's tea it's, it's a long one so buckle up okay several years ago i worked at a country sports bar we had our regulars just like most food bar establishments do. There's one regular in particular. Let's call him Mick. Mick would come in and flirt with all the girls. It was always harmless, so we would just laugh it off. Is it always harmless? <laughs> 
Well, one day I had an early shift and Mick asked if I wanted to grab a drink at a nearby bar that my coworkers and I would frequently attend. So I thought about it for a second and then realized I could get tipsy on his dime. So why not, right? Life is all about decisions. And at that moment, I should have said no and took my ass home, but I didn't. So let's jump back in. Mick and I make it to the nearby bar in time for happy hour where we both had three drinks each. He then tells me he's going to head out soon because he's going to see a game at Madison Square Garden. Oh, this is in New York with his brother-in-law. He asked if I wanted to get in a cab with him to the place where he's meeting his brother-in-law. I say, sure, since I've already had a few drinks and that would be closer for me to get home. Well, when we get out of the cab, it's a bar a few streets down from Madison Square Garden. Mick and his brother-in-law had an hour before the game started, so Mick asked if I wanted to drink before I headed home. At this moment, I could have said no, but did I? Nope. In my head, I figured, let's keep this party going. As you do. Why wouldn't you? I head into the bar and proceed to have many drinks. I vaguely remember flirting with Mick's brother-in-law, who is actually married to Mick's sister. I also vaguely remember Mick saying they were heading out to the game and if I needed a cab home. I'm not sure how I responded, but that's the last memory before I woke up in the hospital. Now, you're probably guessing how I got there. This part was told to me in the hospital. Well... I told Mick no, so they left and went to the game. I was visibly intoxicated, swaying as I walked into the bathroom with my belongings where I passed out in a stall. A bartender that saw me go in but not come out was concerned, so she went in and found me. I wasn't waking up or responsive, so they called an ambulance. Hours later, I wake up in a hospital bed with an IV in my arm being treated for alcohol poisoning. When I came to, I gathered all my things and called the guy that I was talking to at the time, and he had him pick and had him pick me up i was so ashamed and embarrassed at my actions from that night that i chose to end it with getting a drink at that bar wait what i was so ashamed and embarrassed at my actions from that night that i chose to end it with getting a drink at the bar talk about not learning my lesson oh yeah wait so after the the hospital hospital. oh oh god i guess it would have been the next day maybe I don't know how long. Are I you don't in know when you either. Go in? Uh, yeah, I feel like I, you know, I have a similar story. So it's just I've also done that. I've like I made the mistake of like going to a bar or a restaurant with like regulars, and sometimes it's fine. You just like become friends. But like sure. there was this one guy, and like. We went to, he like definitely was trying to fuck me and my girlfriend at the time, which I didn't realize until it's like we were at the restaurant. It was just weird. And I'm like, oh, this is like not cool. So, but when you work at a bar and you know the regulars, it's like you feel like you know them. I had a weird like manager when I was in college in North Dakota and I was like fucking 18 at the time and I was a waitress and we would all party and he was like he wanted to have sex with me but also he was like a father I don't know it was very weird no, and yeah. I was thinking about it the other day and I was like like that, that was inappropriate that was, that was definitely <clears throat> inappropriate I feel like he knew it was inappropriate and there was like part yeah. of him that was fighting with himself about it being inappropriate Ugh. like yeah there were parts of him that were decent and then there were parts of him that were like indecent and yeah yeah the whole thing made Ugh. me so uncomfortable to think about now as an older le- lady yeah fucking weird. Ugh. gross Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. If your New Year's resolution, like me, was to start going to therapy, you will love BetterHelp.com. It is cheaper and more convenient than conventional therapy. You can talk to a licensed real therapist online via call, video chat, or just text, whatever you're feeling like, whatever you feel comfortable with. Go to BetterHelp.com. They'll set you up with a real licensed professional therapist you take a short quiz and they decide who they think would be best for you but if you don't like them for whatever reason you can switch at any time with a no penalty just go to betterhelp.com and if you use our code seltzer squad or go to betterhelp.com slash seltzer squad you will get 10 percent off your first month don't put it off anymore go to betterhelp.com and get started with real therapy today Hey squad, want another way to support the show? 
go to seltzersquadshop.com and get all of our merch. Stickers, hats, tees, backpacks, posters, tank tops, crop tops. They have all of our best sayings on it. So fucking sober, slick as bitch around. Be nice to yourself, and of course, hangover suck. If you want another way to support us and rep Seltzer Squad wherever you go, go to seltzersquadshop.com. All right. That was T. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm going to read W. Ooh, this is long also. I have my glasses on. Okay. Oh, okay. I have a pretty messy story that takes place on a work trip in Texas. When I was boozing, I was notorious for showing up to airports hungover as hell. The night before my flight, I got wasted while packing. I ended up staying super late, having a panic attack, and got into a huge argument with my boyfriend. I woke up late and only halfway packed, so I was rushing to get to my carpool. In the carpool, I cried the entire way to the airport in front of my coworkers, which is a one-hour drive. Oh, no. That's a long time. Mm. I was still a little drunk from the night before, but that didn't stop me from ordering mimosas at the airport. It was 10 a.m., and I was drunk for my work trip, about to get on a plane. When we got to Texas, the drinking didn't stop. I was ordering glass after glass at the hotel bar right in front of my boss. I was definitely coping after the argument with my boyfriend. Later that day, we actually had a meeting at 7 p.m. that I have no recollection of. I vaguely remember talking at the meeting and slurring my words. Apparently, after the meeting, I had a glass of wine in my hand in the hotel lobby, and I yelled at some old men to stop being creepers, and I walked out of the hotel with a full glass of wine. My boss said I was walking down the street. I said, what is this? And threw the full glass in the garbage. When we got to the bar everyone wanted to go to, I fell asleep and the bartender told my boss that I have to leave. My boss and my coworker (laughs) walked me back to the hotel and got me up to my room. I was completely blacked out and apparently throwing a fit. I didn't, I don't know why I wasn't fired right then and there. They probably were like, this chick is a fucking liability. Um, All right. You think I would have learned my lesson and lay low the rest of the trip? Well, think again. The last day of the trip, I decided to go out with everyone and reportedly left the bar that everyone was at to go to a cool speakeasy by myself. (laughs) I was mad at a coworker for taking pictures of me two nights prior, so when I saw her, I jet. I don't remember much of the speakeasy. I ordered I ordered way too many Negronis and passed out on a fancy Victorian couch. The waitress had taken my phone and called my most recent contact to come get me. Who did she call? My boss. All of, oh, sudden, no. all of a sudden, my boss shows up with a coworker with the coworker I was mad at. Again, they had to walk me back to the hotel. It doesn't oh end God. there. When my boss got to my room, apparently I was so pissed that I swung at him. Yes, <gasps> I tried to punch my boss in the face. <laughs> Long story oh my short, God. my boss is a dear friend of mine that should have fired me but didn't. He's a gem and we are still super close. I am probably six months sober and replay the story in my head every time I think about picking up a drink. After Aww. that incident, it took me... Four months of relapsing to get it right. I'm super happy. Thanks for being a great sober resource. Wow, that was a good story, though. Uh, poor girl. That's, That's so embarrassing. That's very relatable. I went on way too many work trips and got fucking shmammered. I don't think really? my boss ever had to like bring me back, but I definitely did a lot of questionable things. Yeah, I don't have any. I like tried to fuck trips. one of my coworkers who was genuinely not <laughs> not interested in me, and he was so nice. And I was just like, but like, like I was just like hammered, and I was like, but but thinking like, you're being all sexy. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, you're, yeah, he's like, I'm go not, away. I'm not interested <laughs> in this. This you are a fucking mess. Oh my god. All right, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna yes. read C. Yes. Now it just says in quotations, trash can. Trash can. So. Let's go for it. I went to Dewey Beach for my bachelorette back in August. I went to Dewey Beach for my bachelorette for six days. Six days. If you've been to a bachelorette, you may know that after one night, your head is pounding the next day or in the toilet. I've actually, no, I don't know that. I don't know why I thought going for six days was a good idea, but at the time it made sense. Half of my bridesmaid could only go Friday through Sunday and the other half could only go Monday through Wednesday. Me, I could do every day and was excited. On the list of things to do are bars, 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 beach, and of course, sea crests, the beach bar slash club in Ocean City, Maryland. I wanted to go so badly to just sit on the stools in piss water. I don't know what, I guess I don't know what any of this is, but I thought she meant piss in the water. Like she just wants to sit there. That's what I thought. Yeah. Sit on stools and piss water. I don't know. Maybe it's like, 
one of those like pool yeah okay yeah, bars yeah. you know I don't know um I was so excited to go out our first night my outfit was perfect I was feeling myself in a white crop top with the biggest of flare bell bottoms you have ever seen we went to the first bar which was all you can drink and eat for a $50 cover oh my god that's crazy it was a no-brainer we ended up meeting a bachelor party while we were there the guy's Talked to my bridesmaids. We took shots together. The night was going amazing. The attention of being the bride to be, endless shots, drinks being handed to me. I couldn't even tell you who was handing me drinks, (laughs) what I was drinking, or what I was even doing. At one point during the night, my friend tried pulling me away from the bar, which caused me to fall. Strike one. Oh, strike one. Those big bell the bounce. Ba- yeah. <clears throat> the bouncers were now aware of my current drunk state. Supposedly, I got up and went off to another section of the bar where the music was. Well, remember those bell bottoms I had on? Well, I guess I tripped because as I went down the stairs to get on the dance floor, I completely wipe out. I ate shit, falling down the stairs hard. Not only did I fall, but I caused such a scene by taking out not... Just one, but two trash cans as I fell. (laughs) Bottles breaking, cans everywhere, and me on my ass at the bottom of the stairs. Supposedly, the bouncer told me I needed to leave. My response was, I'm ready to go anyway. (laughs) And walked myself out and walked across the street to another bar, where I sat by myself, half passed out, as my friends danced the night away. Why did they not go with her? Maybe they didn't know she left. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. The next night we go back to the bar where I fell. Well, at the bar, I come to find out that I have a new nickname among the bartenders and the bachelor party we were with from the night before. Trash can. Lucky me. It's only night two. Fast forward. At one point during my trip, I realized I fucked up my engagement ring when I fell. It had bent and I had broken my ring finger. Oh my God. (laughs) By the way, it was swollen up to my wedding day. My wedding band hardly fit. On day five, my last night of my bachelorette, I had fucked up the worst part. I had fucked up the worst fuck up I could have ever done. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. You read ahead. You read read the first, the next five words. (laughs) No. That was it. Uh huh. (laughs) An ex of mine was in Dewey as well and commented on my Instagram story to meet up. Oh, no. At this point, I'm on day five of my binge drinking vacation. I was what my friend called shampooing. I had been drinking and repeating for five days straight. That's funny. I've never heard that. Have you? No. (laughs) Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Anyway, I hate this guy. In no way did I want to see him. Well, it was a Tuesday night and only three bars were open. So by that alone, we ran into him and his friends. Again, drinks being handed to me, shots being brought from his friends and strangers. Next thing you know, we go back to his friend's house. Oh, no. I know. We're playing Pong, continuing to drink. This makes me sit. This makes me sick to even real relive it. Long story short, I kissed my ex. Oh, okay. Never. I know. I was really I expecting was it going. to go further. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Never have I cheated on my now husband who I've been with for seven years. I never thought I would do something like this and it fuck up my relationship. After that trip, I swore I would never drink again. The anxiety, the shame, anger, guilt. It was the worst hangover I had ever had. I hated myself. My drinking had completely fucked me and the people around me. I hurt my husband and our relationship. I cried so much thinking of how great our relationship was and how I fucking ruined it. And for what? Free drinks? But would you know, I still didn't stop drinking. (laughs) Of course she didn't. I couldn't stop. I had six (laughs) weddings coming up, including my own. There were too many social events on top of being stressed with work, family, planning a wedding, all while trying to save my marriage. Before we say I do, drinking was my outlet. It wasn't until three months after my bachelorette that I got sober. I finally hit my low, which you would think would be kissing my ex, but nope. It was having my head in the dirtiest of toilets blacking out in Maryland. Respect. Oh my God. But three months after that is like not awful. Like no. at least like she re- like that she realized it. Yeah. If oh my god. Got, yeah, I, I'm glad that she uh, realized it. Yeah, me too. I definitely thought she was gonna be like, and then I fucked my ass. Yeah, and then I woke up pissed the bed that I was in 
<laughs> yeah. so, not that it's okay to kiss your ex. Like, obviously, like, not. But, no. oh, I was just really worried there for a second. And she obviously told, I assume she's told her husband. I don't know. That's the part I was wondering if we were going to get to, but I don't think that she Well, she did, said so. how she was trying to save her marriage before they even said I do and stuff. She's doing that in so. her head. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, uh, oh my God. Those six were days is a, I don't know what Dewey Beach is, but I mean, I can obviously like imagine, but six days, that's a long time for a that's drinking a trip. too long for a drinking trip. Yeah. It's, that's really long. I'm also glad that he only, they only met up with him like later in the trip because that could have been fucking bad. Well, also I'm proud of her because she didn't want to meet up with him that she just beca- happenstance ran into him because there were only three true. bars open. So true. I don't think she would have even seen him. That's true. So, oh my God. Well, squad, send in your hot mess stories. You know where to reach mm-hmm. us. Um, That's it. Yeah. Tell me it again. Be nice to yourself. And don't forget. Hangovers, hangovers suck. suck. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. Every review helps other listeners find us. Music by Dead Go West. Art by Kate Sander. For show notes and resources, check out SeltzerSquad.com.